I just watched all four James Bond movies starring Pierce Brosnan, so let's rank them. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good one today. I'm the Movie Ranker, and today I'm ranking all four 007 movies starring Pierce Brosnan from worst to best. Now, like I said in my Daniel Craig Bond video, I am no James Bond expert. The first time I watched a 007 movie was just a couple years ago, the first time I ever watched one. I went through all the Sean Connery films, all the 70s films as well. And yeah, they're fun movies. I'm just no expert in them, so my ranking is probably not going to resemble a ranking of a diehard fan who've seen these movies a million times, right? But uh, this is my list. I'm sticking to my guns. I'm not going to change it <laughs> just to please people. But I'd love to hear how you rank this franchise or these four films down in the comments section. We'll have a great discussion. Like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future rankings like this. And without wasting any more time, let's rank them. So coming into last place for me at number four, I had to go with Die Another Day. I think we can all agree that this is the worst Pierce Brosnan-led Bond movie, and one of the worst Bond movies in general of the entire franchise. It's pretty god-awful. I do like the way it opens, though, with uh, Bond being captured by North Korea and tortured and whatnot. It's very dark, very gritty, but after the first act, uh, it's kind of all forgotten, and we're thrown right back into the usual Bond stuff. It gets very silly in that. And uh, I just wish they would have stuck with the more darker tone in that that they got at the very start. It was very interesting. Something we'd never seen before in a Bond flick. Another thing I liked is the intro song. I know a lot of people hate it, but I actually enjoy uh, Madonna's uh, title track here, Die Another Day. I remember when it came out. Um, I never watched this movie when it came out, but I do remember this song. It was pretty big at the time. It's very techno-driven, electronic uh, I know a lot of people won't like it. They say it doesn't fit the Bond style for music. I get it. But it kind of works for this film. Since this film goes uh, so digital and tries to be so modern with its CGI and that, that the title track kind of works for the most part. I enjoy it anyway. Um, it's better than the pointless cameo Madonna gets in the movie, which is completely forgettable. But yeah, that's basically all the positives I can give to this film. Um... The biggest thing about this movie is obviously the CGI, the digital effects look god awful. They didn't age well at all. Really outdated. I'm talking the kite surfing on the tsunami. It looks so bad. It's like watching a cartoon with Pierce Brosnan uh, slapped on there. It, it's god awful. And I get that they were trying to move these movies into a more modern digital age. But it just did not work at all. It was a complete failure in my opinion i also think the story is kind of dumb too how uh we get this head north korean guy uh race swapping he gets a whole identity change with this machine <laughs> it turns him into a white british guy and he happens to put on a perfect british accent and everything to fool everybody that's kind of far-fetched and kind of silly you know especially with this dark intro this movie gave us but What's even worse is his partner who gets a really cool look by getting a bunch of diamonds embedded into his face in an explosion. So half his face is full of diamonds. Cool look. But he goes for this uh, DNA swap machine as well and tries to go <laughs> for a race swap. And he didn't even take the diamonds out, the idiot. So he's trying to look like this white dude. He still looks part Asian and with diamonds in his face. Dead giveaway who the guy really is i thought that was really dumb um halle berry is a very forgettable uh bond girl she's only uh remembered for being halle berry if it was anybody else in this role she would have been completely forgotten and i don't feel like she brings a whole lot to the table she gets captured multiple times in the movie i i, I just don't see the what's so great about her you know what i mean very forgettable and plus since this movie was the 20th bond film and it was like the 40th anniversary at the time of its release for uh, bond franchise in general when it comes to the movies they threw in a ton of easter eggs and references and callbacks to the other films but it doesn't feel so much as a tribute it feels more like 
they just couldn't come up with ideas on their own, so they just were stealing from all the other movies. They're not like cool tributes either. They're like, I seen that better in another movie every time. So it's awful. Uh, one scene in particular is like the laser scene, which they stole from Goldfinger. Except this time, there's no tension. There, there's nothing. It's ridiculous. The final act in here is ridiculous too, with them, uh, the plane blowing up and them escaping on a helicopter, and it's just really dumb, really far fetched. Um, the MI6 agent that was really bad working with the bad guys was a lame twist as well. Again, something we've seen before and done better in the past. This movie is just pretty god awful. And I'm going to end it there. Pretty bad last place for me. Up next at number three, I'm going with The World Is Not Enough. Now, just to say, from here on out, I enjoyed all three of these films. I give them all positive ratings. And they're not a whole lot separating them in my ratings, you know what I mean? And I really did enjoy The World Is Not Enough. I feel like the Bond girl slash villain, Elektra, was friggin' amazing. She's one of my favorite female characters in the franchise, if I'm being honest. I just really liked the way she was able to manipulate Bond and to, you know, she was seeming very innocent in that at first. And you do not believe she's a villain at all. Until it's revealed later in the film. I thought it was set up brilliantly. Love the mystery behind the story and everything. And her intentions. And how, you know, you just don't expect it because she was kidnapped and everything. So she does feel like the victim. But she just plays it so well. I think the actress portraying this character did a great job. She's very believable. And the way she dies, man, it's just so... It could have hit even harder, I feel. But it's done very well where... Bond doesn't hesitate. He just freaking shoots her. You feel like he may... Is he gonna? Is he not gonna? Because he was kind of falling for her. Even though he knows that she tricked her at this point. Tricked him. But yeah. I feel like if... It would have went a little bit further in the relationship aspects. If the movie would have really honed in on that. And made Bond really like fall for this girl. Uh, it would have hit even harder when he had to kill her. But it still hits pretty hard. It's pretty cold-blooded the way he just... Poof, shoots her i freaking love that scene um the other bond girl <laughs> on the other hand denise richards who seems to be one of the most hated actresses in this entire franchise and i admit she's a pretty bad actress her character doesn't offer a whole lot she's only there for her looks and sure she's a nuclear scientist or whatever the hell like as if that's believable um, but you know, we've seen this sort of thing in the Bond franchise before where these super hot women in bikini and that being spies and whatnot. So I don't know. It didn't ruin the movie for me. That's for sure. There's some people that say that completely put the last nail in the coffin for this film. Not the case for me. She's not great, but she doesn't ruin it for me and she's easy on the eyes. And we get a hilarious line at the end of the film when, her and Bond are making love and he says something like I thought Christmas only came once a year <laughs> pretty hilarious stuff but yeah she she's not great Electra's definitely the standout here but yeah I love her character uh Bond's great in here as well I love the whole story and trying to figure out what's really going on and everybody's true intentions uh our other main villain is this dude who has a bullet lodged in his brain and I feel like they didn't do enough with his character he because the guy can't feel pain or nothing. So you could have really went far with this. Like I expected a major battle in the end between him and Bond and perhaps like Bond shooting him and cutting off limbs and stuff, you know, and him keep going since he can't feel it. We don't really get anything like that. We get like one or two little scenes to show that he can't feel pain, like when he picks up a hot coal or whatever. But it's never really utilized in a fun way. And, and uh, concerned with the action and stuff like that. It's never really used to that, which is unfortunate because it could have been really cool. But that's one thing that this movie fails to do is give us good action. Uh, I know a lot of people love the opening with the crazy boat chase scene and <laughs> how the boat can like go off on, on the streets. It's ridiculous to me. To me, that wasn't great action or anything. I don't think there's any great action in this movie. It's all serviceable. But it's all kind of mediocre in the end and not very rememberable. Like, it's it's fairly forgettable, I should say. Um, you got that one really dumb scene near the docks where the bad guys show up with a helicopter with the saw blades underneath. Like, that would have been cool 
to include in an action scene if they were in the woods or at a camp or something where they're cutting trees and they use that. We do see it earlier in the film where they're cutting trees with it. But for them to show up at these dock, this dock place with that as a weapon, it's pretty dumb. It's obviously just forced in there to make for a cool action scene. But to me, it was just way too silly and over the top. So yeah, most of the action scenes don't work for me in here. Um, the whole pipeline scene with the explosion. It's all very mediocre to me. And I feel like that's the weakest thing about this movie is definitely the action. It's not satisfying at all. There's quite a bit of it in here. But none of it's real great. And that's one of the main reasons why this one is a bit lower on my list. As well as not really doing much with the villain with the bullet in his head. But I do love Elektra. I do like how the story plays out. So this is at number three. But like I said, it's still a very good Bond flick in my opinion. In second place is where I piss off everybody. Because for me at second place I have to go with Goldeneye. Now I know this is one of the fan favorites in the entire franchise, not just the Pierce Brosnan era, and that's perfectly fine. You're allowed to like it. I like it as well. I just prefer another movie over this one. But yeah, this is a very solid flick. Uh, I think Pierce Brosnan is at his best here, personally. I, f I really like the way he presents himself as Bond, especially in his first flick. He really proved that he has what it takes. I also love the score to this film, the industrial sound to it. Sounds like they're hitting metal and stuff at different times. It's a lot along the lines of the soundtrack to the video game, the N64 Goldeneye video game, which, you know, I grew up with, one of the best video games of all time. I feel like people use that as an excuse for putting this as one of the best Bond movies. Uh, not the case for me. I do love the video game. It's super influential. It changed... Uh, first person shooters forever and it really brought in local multiplayer to a whole new level not faulting the game at all but this is talking about the movie but I do like how some of that soundtrack does is in this movie as well we do get some of that industrial sounds there's one part of the movie though where the soundtrack does not work at all in a car chase scene you get this like funky like 70s style music which does not go with this modern film at all and they also did a pretty good job with this movie, uh, you know, with the Cold War being over and everything, no one really knew where the Bond films could go. They thought maybe it was over for this franchise, but no, they actually incorporated that into the story, how this is after the Cold War and everything, and it plays out really nicely, and it brings Bond back in a really cool way that makes sense in this era. And this really feels like a middle ground, like a stepping stone for the old Bond movies into like the newer Daniel Craig movies. It has a mixture of both eras in here, I feel. So they did a great job with that. Judy Dench as M was a bold choice, you know, changing M to a female character. But it absolutely works. She's amazing in the character as the character. And it's no wonder why they kept her in the Daniel Craig films, because she is so good. Um, especially in this flick. I think she's at her best as well, and her interactions with Bond are great, especially near the starting of the film. I think Sean Bean, uh, who plays uh, 006, I think does a pretty great job as well. I feel like he's a little underused in this flick. Um, there's a big twist where he's really uh, the bad guy, you know, former uh, agent working with Bond before, so they have this connection um, they can kind of read each other. It's kind of interesting, but again, he's kind of underutilized. He shows up in the later half of the movie to reveal he's the the villain where you think he got killed at the first, which again, doesn't really make a bunch of sense how he survived that. Even if the gun was a blank, just to fake his death, there was like a bunch of barrels fell down and the place ended up catching fire and exploding. And all he ended up was a little bit of a burn mark on his face. But yeah, Sean Bean does a great job with the character. I just feel like he's underutilized. I would have liked to see more of that villain and for him to be a little bit more fleshed out and have more screen time. On the other hand, his crazy sidekick henchman girl uh, on the top, I forget her first name, like Xenia or something like that. She is absolutely crazy and I love her. She is probably the best female villain that we get in the entire franchise. At least one of my favorites. She's so damn good. She uses her seduction to win over uh, men and then kill them in, uh, at times where they don't expect it, right? And yeah, she's this crazy wild card. 
when people are dying around her, it looks like she's getting off on that. And she's just so psycho, but I love that about her. She really stands out because of that. I just wish she would have also gotten more screen time. She dies off fairly early for me. I would have liked to see more of her. Um, but yeah, it, it is what it is. The Bond girl here, Natalia, I think she's great as well. Kind of uh, underappreciated. She's uh, clever and uses her wits and whatnot. And I like how she has a connection to one of the bad guys, Boris, who's like a computer geek hacker guy. And, uh, yeah, she uses what she knows about him and his secret passwords and that to advance the plot, you know, and figure out what's going on, which is great. Figure out their location. Uh, and I love the ending that Boris gets when he goes, I am invincible. <laughs> he ends up getting covered in uh, liquid uh, nitrogen or whatever it is. Um, is that, is that what it's called? Had a little brain fart there. I think it is liquid liquid nitrogen. I don't know why I'm thinking it might be something else. But anyway, when he gets covered in that and he goes, I am invincible. And he gets frozen like that. Great ending to that character. But the movie's not perfect. There's a few times I'm like, what is going on with the bad guys? Like where they have a clear shot at Bond. And they're like, no, don't shoot. And it's like, why? You want to kill him the whole time and now you don't want to shoot while he's escaping? Like, little things like that. Or, like, when he's at the very start in the opening where they have uh, Sean Bean's character down, ready to execute him, and Bond's hiding. And he, he hides behind this, like, little box thing. And th there's, like, a whole army of soldiers there in front of him. And they're just waiting for him. Instead of, like, charging him from the sides like a normal movie would do. But no, there's just little nitpicks like that that kind of bother me in regards to the action or whatnot. Another scene um, where it's revealed where one of the satellites are underwater. When the water is uh, disappearing, going into the ground or into the drain, you could so tell it's just a reverse shot of water, uh, you know, really coming out and they just reversed it. It's so obvious. But again, it's just little nitpicks like that that bring this movie down a little bit for me, but not much. Um, I still really enjoyed this one, and I see why most of you have it in first place. But for me, coming in the first place, I have to go with Tomorrow Never Dies. Or, it should have been called Tomorrow Never Lies, I suppose, but I guess there was a typo, and they end up naming it Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies sounds cooler, but Tomorrow Never Lies... Uh, sounds more like a Bond flick, and it would make much more sense within how the story plays out, right? But that's not the title we got. But regardless, I feel like this movie is so underrated, so underappreciated. It seems to get thrown under the bus a lot. A lot of people don't like it. I don't know why. I find it's one of the more fun flicks, especially in this era, from start to finish. has the best pacing, um, the, some of the best action sequences. Very fun. Uh, in one in particular is the car scene where he has the remote control uh, vehicle that no one can get into and he eventually jumps in the back and is controlling it and it has missiles and inflatable tires that after they get busted and everything. It's just so fun to watch a lot of the action in this flick. Uh, another scene is when he's riding the motorcycle uh, with his Asian partner, uh, Wan, uh, Wan Lin, or... Wei Lin, I think her name is. She's great in here as well. I'll get to her. But yeah, that motorcycle chase scene is exciting. And it just feels like the movie is just really well paced with uh, the slip in these action sequences at the right times just to keep the flow of the movie running perfectly for, compared to the rest of these films. I feel like this one had the best flow to it in, in my mind anyway. Uh, I really like the story to this one too, even though it's something we've kind of seen before where the bad guys pit two superpowers against each other this time being uh britain and uh, china but the way they do it i really liked it this time how they had like a decoder screw up uh the, this ship's gps so they didn't really know where they are when they were really in chinese waters and this causes them to freak out missiles get launched not by them by the bad guys but they believe it was each other and it just makes for a really interesting story, especially since the villain in this is this media mongol who runs this thing called Tomorrow. And he owns the newspaper, the news and everything. And obviously he knows what's going on because he's causing all this. So he can publish like about the Chinese and about the British and create all this propaganda, which, you know, he's not the most threatening villain, but I do like that. How it was about the media controlling uh, what the people know, what's going on in the news and whatever. It's something that happens in real life in certain countries, you know, in a lot of countries. 
So all that propaganda and whatnot was real interesting and a clever storyline to throw in here. Uh, getting to the Bond girl. I think her name's uh, Wei Lin. I'll check just real quick. Yeah, Wei Lin. She's great in here, played by uh, Michelle Yeoh. Um, she was just recently in Everything Everywhere uh, All at Once or whatever the hell that movie was called. Uh, that crazy, wacky multiverse movie. And she's great in that. And she's also great in here. I love her. She is Bond's equal. She can take care of herself. She can kick ass. Um, I love when they go to her hideout and you don't think it's a hideout and everything flips and there's TVs and computers and everything. And Bond's like touching all, all of their gadgets and doesn't really understand anything that's there. <laughs> Can't even use her keyboard because it's in Chinese uh, symbols and stuff. I just think she's such a great character, very fun to watch, and she pairs really well with Bond in here. And our main villain, Carver, is played by uh, Jonathan Price, who I know well from Pirates of the Caribbean, being uh, Kira Knightley's father in the film. You know, the royalty guy <laughs> who has the daughter, him. And he plays it so well in here. Again, he's not like physically intimidating, but he has a certain wit to him. I like his line delivery and he has a really fun uh, scene where he's uh, mocking uh, Wei Lin and he's like doing kung fu moves in front of her. <laughs> he's like, what you going to do? I don't know. It's just so funny. I get a laugh out of that scene every time I think about it. It's so good. And I like the final act, how it takes place on the stealth boat and they're like trying to go on it flooding got uh, people british attacking it and everything it's just a really fun exhilarating final act i don't know why a lot of people hate this movie i think it's gets undeserved hate because to me it was fun from start to finish gave me everything i want in a bond movie uh pierce brosnan is great again as bond he gets a couple one too many one-liners that make you roll roll your eyes back a couple times and there's a few instances with the action although it's very fun where people are shooting straight at Bond and no one can seem to hit him, but that's a problem in 99% of action flicks. But it happens in this one as well. Um, so no changes there. But I really do feel like this was a really fun adventure with great gadgets, great characters, great final act, great action. So for me, it comes in first place. So there you have it, guys. There's my ranking of all four Pierce Brosnan Bond movies. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I don't have the regular list most people have. I know everybody has GoldenEye at the top of their list. Uh, I even put out a poll and it was like 70% GoldenEye for the win. I understand it and I do really love the N64 video game. You know, you have to separate the two when you're ranking these. Um, but for me, Tomorrow Never Dies is the my fan favorite, is my favorite I should say in this uh, particular video. But I'd love to hear how you rank these four films. Do you have an interesting, unique ranking as well? I'd love to see it. Perhaps you like Die Another Day as your favorite. No hate coming from me. It's just very interesting to hear things like that. <laughs> but that's what makes us all different. Um, you can follow me on Letterboxd and Instagram, guys. Links to those are always in the descriptions of my video. Um, what else? Uh, like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy rankings like this. I do all genres. So you don't want to miss out. And that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, thanks for watching.